Hey Terrarians, how's it going? My name is Pixelated Fireball, and welcome back to Elements Awoken. Ugh. Will there ever be a day that you people are not here waiting for me? My god. Everybody's always making fun of me about being suspicious about the bunnies and being paranoid, but I'm telling you, you just wait. You'll see. Eventually one day, you will all see. The bunnies are the real menace in Terraria. The Moon Lord is here to stop the bunnies. Really, I should be helping him. But enough about that business. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday, and for those of you that didn't celebrate, I hope you still had a good day anyway, even though that Thanksgiving and whatever else might be celebrated on that day was a great while ago. I guess not really all that great while of a while of ago. Great a while ago? I'm not exactly sure how to say that, but you know what I'm trying to get at. Hope you all had a wonderful holiday season, or at least a wonderful end of your November, which isn't quite over yet, but it's getting there. Moving on in to the cold of the December weather, the snow and the ice and all that good stuff. And speaking of snow and ice, today is the day that we will most likely be facing off against permafrost, because I don't imagine the golem is going to take very long. Those two are the next on the list, and there's a couple of things that I've done off camera. A couple changes. The first one you might notice is this fellow right here, the wyvern pet that I've got. And he is here for the very specific reason that I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what, something is lacking from this Let's Play. Something that is like always a staple, episode after episode, a friend is always with us, a furry or a, or a scaly or a spooky ghost, some kind of pet companion is following us around on our adventures across the world and I didn't have one. For the longest time, I didn't have a buddy to follow me around, so I settled on this guy, big, spindly, floppy thing here. It's like having my own personal wyvern kite. And you make this guy with the pink shoe. It is a donator item. And this thing is very simply crafted in hard mode, with some souls of flight, one silk, and one pink gel. Very easy crafting recipe. So you can have your very own wyvern friend, baby wyvern, following you around. In addition to that, I did a little bit of farming. As you know, we've gotten another boss prompt after the defeat of Plantaria, and this time we've got Hypothermia. The temperature plummets. Movement speed reduced by 5% at all times, might I add, and applies random ice debuffs. Frequent hailstorms, which are excruciatingly painful to deal with. Being within seven blocks of a campfire or lava removes this effect. Defeat Permafrost to stop this effect. And like I said, he is the next boss on the list. Well, he's not quite the next boss, but I mean, I barely consider Gollum a boss. I mean, who knows? He might give me a run for my money this time around because of Awakened Mode, but I really doubt it. His mechanics are rather simple, but I've got some basic damage and defense potions to take with me, just in case. But of course, with a new boss prompt comes a new type of elemental and a new type of essence that we can go hunt down. And I've already gone and done that because I built myself an arena for permafrost over here in the snow biome. I have myself a pretty decently sized arena over here. Should give me plenty of room. I'm not exactly sure how big the boss is gonna be, but I think this ought to do it, you know? Couple layers of platforms. I didn't wanna go up too high just in case the boss enrages out of the snow biome, but I wanted to sort of keep a bar up here. This top platform exists more to just remind me of how far up I should be flying. This is a little combination of the hallow and the ice biome, so I don't know if that'll make a difference. I don't think so. But I farmed up a lot of the new essences and I got myself some upgraded gear, some of which I actually can't upgrade until I defeat the golem, so that's why we're gonna do him first. Even though you guys told me that I should get this debuff away from me as fast as possible, it's definitely gonna be irritating, but I'm not gonna have it on long, so don't worry about it. It's gonna be all good. Everything is gonna be just fine. Won't be that big of a deal. I'm sure we'll be able to take down the golem and whatever's in the temple with, you know, little to no problem at all whatsoever. I mean, I said that about Plantera, but, uh, you know, whatever. We're not gonna talk about that really, really bad day that that was. But anyway, like I said, I made some new things, made some new weapons and some new armor set, not on armor sets, but some new pieces. Although I did make the dragon mail set here out of those refined draconite that I farmed up from the enemies that are now infesting the underground, which are supremely irritating. But what this thing does is I, I swapped it in for the titanium set because while it is really good to have shadow dodge, this, I think, is definitely going to give me a little bit of an edge. More mana, more armor. I think that'll balance out pretty good. So we've got a nice increase to my max mana, reduced mana usage, and a good increase to magic damage and critical strength on pretty much all of these things. We've got the 5% increased base damage for the chest piece, immunity to on fire, my body glows, and a 5% increased mining speed. And for the leggings, we've got an increase to movement speed and melee speed and an increase to my life regen. Also, like I said, a good chunk of armor from that, as well as the set bonus, which magic projectiles inflict dragon fire, magic damage increases as life lowers, which is something that's really good because, as I've said many times, 
I spend a considerable amount of time almost dead, so that'll be really helpful. In addition to that, I've upgraded my boots. I now have the Frost Walkers, which are just a combination of the new essences, which are Frost Essences, some ice, some Chlorophyte, ice skates, which are craftable, I believe, out of some silk, iron, and some ice blocks, and of course the Skyline Whirlwinds. So now I have awesome speed. Greater mobility on ice, immunity to fire blocks, temporary immunity to lava and flight and slow fall, all that good stuff. So we got that upgraded. We also have a couple of new things. There is the enchanted ice crystal, which we're going to be using to summon permafrost. I made a couple of those because, like I said, I don't know anything about the boss. I don't know whether or not he's going to be a significant challenge for me or not. But, you know, I have this here. Multiple attempts, most likely. And the one magic weapon that I was able to craft was the snowflake staff which shoots a magical snowflake that follows the cursor. And I was lucky enough to get it up to mythical, although I'm not exactly sure how useful it's going to be. You've got this little thing right here. Well, I guess it's not really little. It's like the size of my character, but got a little snowflake. You hold it over things for a little while. Does a good bit of damage, I guess. Good chunks of damage there, but it goes away after a while. I don't know how effective that'll be on the boss, but you know what? We can just rapid fire, you know? It's also a very loud weapon, you know? It's very, very loud. I'm sure my NPCs love this right now. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go. Oh, how I torture my NPCs. They love me. They love it. It's all good. They, they just love it. They love it. But anyway, we've got that. It can travel through solid blocks. It's not a bad weapon, I suppose. Might be helpful for taking down enemies in the temple. Which is where we are going next. Today might end up being a farming episode as well. I have a lot of stuff that I have to do now. I have to go over to the dungeon to go farming over there. I have yet to get a solar eclipse at all. I'm sure there's things that I need from there. Probably the order that I'm going to go in. Actually, I'm not even sure. Maybe I ought to go to the dungeon first. Before I even bother with the golem. Because I'm pretty sure there is a great deal of stuff over there. Yes, there is a whole bunch of stuff that I can do with Chlorophyte. But I don't know if I can do any of this yet. I know that the specter set exists over there, but I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to need it. Either way, we're definitely going to be going over there as soon as possible. Definitely going to be getting some ectoplasm. Take a look and see if that's actually useful for anything. There is some boss summons. Got to get that stuff for the naughty present as well as the pumpkin moon. If I'm going to need either one of those events. Eh, there's a couple of things. I should probably head over to the dungeon first before I go take down the golem. Just to make sure there isn't anything that I'm going to need going into the next stage here. Nothing that I might need for Burmafrost. We can poke around in there, probably grab some stuff to make the specter set. See if that stacks up any better against these. The magic damage and crit and all that, uh, the added benefit of the life steal that I get. I have to see. Maybe it might be something new over there that I can craft out of the weapons. Oh well, we're gonna find out in due time. So onward and upward to the dungeon once again. Ah, oh, the witch doctor has moved in over here. Well, I hate to tell you, but I gotta evict you again. This is really awkward. I know you're not the biggest fan of the nurse to begin with. I don't like Lorraine either. I would much rather have Helen back, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Did I set my spawn? I did. Okay. So the nurse has already moved in up there. We should be good to go. Ready to get absolutely obliterated by all the enemies down here. I can only imagine how painful it will be dealing with these guys. They've got a good chunk of health, but they're dying pretty fast. I gotta get myself to a reasonable depth, and maybe I can mine out a wide enough space, perhaps? Maybe then I should be able to get a good amount of these as quickly as possible. I'm kind of very, very hesitant to set down a banner or anything down here. Drink any battle potions. Because I don't really want to get swarmed and massacred. Ow! See? Right there. See what I mean? This is exactly what I'm talking about. You don't want this to happen. Bone Lee, you're on my hit list today. Zerigwa, come on, dude. You gotta get out. You gotta go. The nurse is here now. This is her house. Yes, just, just get out. Walk all the way back from here to the base. Actually, go all the way back over to your jungle house. You'll be fine. You got this. I believe in you. Ah, god, necromancers. What a welcoming party. Okay, so we're not having too terribly much trouble taking down the enemies in here. Now, say that before a paladin shows up and just mops the floor with me. I'm a little bit concerned, I gotta say. I'm a little bit concerned. Maybe it might be best if I go over to... It looks like there's a nice big room over to the other side. If I can get through here, excuse me. Do you mind? Mm-hmm. Yep, everybody's gotta hit me for 300 damage, don't they? I mean, I don't know what I expected. The hard mode dungeon is always a pain. Why would it be any different this time? Uh, nurse, what are you doing? Lorraine, you're outside sniffing the sunflowers. Quit being such a baby. 
You know, Helen would never do that. She stayed right in her spot and she waited for me. Like a good companion. But you know what? Fine. Whatever, Lorraine. Got a nice warm bucket of lava waiting for you when we get back. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, good golly gosh. Thank you, Blue Slime. You are a true companion. You are the hero of today's episode. Goodbye, Lorraine. Get out. That's right, now give me Helen back. That would put the cherry on top of this episode, no matter what failures may come as a result of me just being unable to deal with this game at a high difficulty. Everything will be worth it today. Absolutely all of it. Everything is always a victory. Oh well, doesn't hurt to dream, I guess. Oh, another paladin. I am gonna do it this time. I'm definitely taking him down. Might be a little bit tricky to deal with him right there and all, but oh god. Happy little cloud, where are you? You go deal with it. I cannot. There we go. Okay, so we just gotta get rid of his little friends in here and everything will be just fine. Everything will be just fine. Everything's gonna be great for you guys because, you know, you have nothing to worry about now that I'm dead. You notice also that the majority of my gravestones, I, because I've just noticed it as well, I thought I would draw attention to it. The majority of my gravestones are all connected in the same place and there is a blizzard or a hailstorm. That's just lovely. I love that so much. Does it go away inside the dungeon? I sure hope it does. It'd be really weird if there was a hailstorm in the dungeon. There we go. Okay, nothing to worry about there. Where are my ragged casters at? Those are the guys that I need. Those guys got the good stuff. Don't need these. More of these necromancers, bleh. They only exist to frustrate me, along with everything else in this game. Okay, so I've made a few minor adjustments down here to try to help me survive a little bit more. I cleared out a nice big area and, you know, I assumed that I would be safer in here, but as you can see, all I've invited is bats into the dungeon, which just makes everything so much better. Just gotta clear this area out here. Hopefully I don't get murdered, but if I do, you know what? I can just come back right here and everything will be great and I don't have to worry about despawning. So I can speed this process up a little bit because I kind of calculated it out using my uh, advanced mathematical skills. It's gonna take me a while to get what I need. You know, factoring in variables like the amount of times that I get killed before I actually manage to kill something myself, you know. I have to put all that in, variables, mathematics. It's, it's above the average intellect, I know. You know, this really isn't helping the way that I thought it would. Honestly, I feel like I'm just helping them kill me faster. You just wait till I kill you enough. I'll get my banners, and then I swear, I'm gonna get some. Ah, there's one. Your days are numbered. Mmm. Not as numbered as mine, but they're running out. It's a shame the nurse hasn't moved in down here yet, but honestly, I don't blame her. She's probably up there thinking to herself, no, I'm not going down there. I can hear your screaming from all the way up here. I am not going down there. By the way, those snipers, boy, I love them. Love them with their incredibly long-ranged attack and their 400 damage shaw. Oh, they're my favorite. Oh, Bone Lee. Bone Lee, that's another one that I just can't get enough of. Just can't get enough of that guy, that Bone Lee. What a fellow. Hey, look, the nurse, she finally felt bad enough for me that she came down to help. What a nice lady. Paladin. Yeah, my yellow stream will hold you at bay. I will defeat you with the power. Oh, the power of innuendos. Oh, oh God. The power of innuendos was not enough. I'd like to believe we're making progress. We've almost got a full stack of ectoplasm. I wanna say that that's a good job. Though I don't know exactly how many I'm gonna need, but I'm, I'm thinking I have a rough estimate. Thank you. You know, I'm sure there are probably a million and one better ways to do this, but you know what? I've got to be that guy that picks the only wrong choice. Oh, and of course, now a solar eclipse is happening. What happened to my spawn point? Welp, I think I've accidentally clicked off my bed over there, but it's okay, because there are some things that I need from the solar eclipse as well. So I think it's probably a good idea to take a break from all that farming down there. I might actually be good to go. I need to check and make sure that I don't need the stuff from Bone Leaf or anything, because I want to double check, because I have a funny feeling. I need to go back there to get the rest of that stuff. It's the only pieces I'm missing though. I've got all the other magic stuff that I could want from in there. 
and a big stack of ectoplasm that should be more than enough to make what I want with it. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I need stuff from the creatures from the deep as well as stuff from vampires, so I gotta keep my eye out for these guys. It'd be nice if they didn't hit excruciatingly hard though, but why would anything not, you know? Why wouldn't it hit me for almost all my health? Wouldn't have it any other way. Yep, just can't get enough. This is a very painful episode today, ladies and gentlemen. If you couldn't already tell, this is gonna be a painful one. Oh no, don't go down there. Don't do that. Oh no, they're in my base. That's not good. Oh good, Mothron's here. That's just lovely. And there she goes. Well, was nice to see you for a little while. There we go, we finally almost got a Mothron down. I believe in myself. Well, you know, I really didn't see that coming. I thought I had her there for a second. Eventually, maybe not yet, maybe not even in this solar eclipse, but eventually. Oh good, a blizzard. That's exactly what I need right now. A nice hail storm, that'll do some good. Makes everything much better. Okay, this time I am determined. I will get Mothron down now. There is no avoiding it, there's no escaping it. I will not allow myself to fail again. Fully observant. Nothing is sneaking up on me. I am a master of focus. Full, 100% focus. I have my new boots, I can outrun her. Just about, just barely, ah, God. Okay, here we go, we got this. We got this. Goodbye, Mothron, there we go. We finally got her down. Delightful, we got a broken hero sword. There's another Mothron, there we go. We'll see if there's another variant of a broken hero something, a staff or a knife or whatever might be available to me right now. Mothron's really not all that much of a problem as long as I don't get hit by her. Honestly, I think the vampires and the butchers and everything hit harder than she does. There we go, it's the second one down. Looks like it's just broken hero swords. My god, they're everywhere. A whole bunch of stuff that I need in there, a whole bunch of enemies I need to kill. So I'll just use the power of innuendos once again. There we go. There's the stone. I can see it. I just need the thing from the creature from the deep. It's all I need. So I gotta keep my eyes out for them. Also, watch out for the Lego bricks. As soon as you're looking away, that's when they sneak up on you. Come out of nowhere. You look away for 10 seconds, and then you gotta go to the doctor and explain why you have to pull a Lego lightsaber out of the bottom of your foot. Oh, and there we go. Just in the nick of time, it looks like. Looks like the solar eclipse is about over. We've got the shell and we've got the moonstone. That's perfect. So all that death and pain and suffering, it wasn't for nothing. Everything is a victory. Well, since that's over with, there's no need to carry on with this business. Okay, now go away, everybody. Everybody go away. I don't need you there anymore. Okay, I've got a lot of stuff in my inventory here. So I have got to clear some things out. Let's make sure we pick up this very valuable stuff. Broken toys we don't need, mushrooms we don't need. You know, it doesn't stop. Even when they're all gone, I can still find a way to die. Thank you, Lego Brick. I feel like I'm not 100% sure, but I want to say that throughout the course of this Let's Play, since those mobs have started to spawn, I think Lego Bricks have killed me more than anything else in this entire Let's Play. Well, at the very least, this has been a very enlightening experience. So now we can head down to the safety of our base, hopefully not find a way to get myself killed in here, drop all this stuff off and see if there's anything new that I can craft at this moment. It doesn't look like the Specter Staff or the Magnet Spear are useful for anything, unless I just overlook them. Um, I do know that I need to get myself some more Chlorophyte, because I've only got the 50 of them. I don't think that's quite enough to craft everything that I need. There's a moon shell. I know I need that. But what am I missing from this? I need a celestial shell, and I need a celestial stone to do that, which means I need the moonstone and the sunstone. Then I can make the nano core once I get this gem of the universe, which I think drops from something much later on. And the only thing I'm missing from this is the sunstone from the golem, so I'm going to be fighting that guy a good few times. So I might want to grab all the potions that I need just in case. There was something else that I wanted to check out. I wanted to make sure I didn't need the Master Ninja Gear for anything in particular. I do. I need them for the Boots of the Void, which is a further upgrade of the Aquatic Waders, which is the next upgrade for the Frost Walkers, it looks like. So I need to go back over there and farm all that stuff. I think I have the Tiger Climbing Claws already. I'm not sure. I do not. What am I missing from that little equation there? 
I am missing the climbing claws, but I have the shoe spikes. I swear I've collected some climbing claws over my time. Oh well, whatever. I'm going to move on to the next thing here. I'm going to go and kill the golem now. I'm not going to go and get the tab eye and all that stuff just yet, because I don't want to spend the entire episode farming and dying, although I'm sure you all find it highly entertaining. I'm going to move on, and I am, in fact, going to bring all my potions with me. I may end up using all of them, but at least the non-expensive ones which I don't actually think I have all of anymore anyway. I need to get my Wrath and my Rage potions, and I need to get my Life Force potions. I have Rage potions, I don't have any Wrath potions. Okay, whatever, this should be good enough. Let's bring some sashimi. I have unfortunately ran out of pumpkin pie. Okay, so now we're going to head over to the temple, which I imagine is probably going to be just as awful as everything else in this video has been. And there's a blizzard. I think I see why you guys said to take permafrost down now. Ha! Take that. Can't have a blizzard in the desert. That doesn't make any sense. The one time Terraria decides to abide by the laws of reality. I like to imagine it's just this little space right here. This little patch, you move a little bit too far to the left, and like, instant snowstorm. And then you move a few steps to the right. Sunny day. It's kind of amusing. I don't know. I think that's kind of funny. I imagine this patch of sand with like, blizzards and hailstorms and thunder and rain and everything going on exactly like a centimeter outside of its borders. That's what I imagine in my head. I'm glad that doesn't happen in the real world. Or does it? I don't know. I'm not a weatherologist. Oh, it's even snowing in the jungle. Now, does that happen in real life? Because I doubt it. I really do. Okay, so we're gonna head down in. God, that hail is uncomfortable. At least it will stop underground. At least I hope it will. I hope it's not blizzarding in the temple. Okay, we're good. So let's get down to the temple as quickly as we can and take down the golem. And actually, I'm going to try and find some chlorophyte if possible. Those mobs are going to very quickly become an issue for me. Those guys, dragon chargers, they're not fun. Oh boy, I didn't even make it five inches into this place. All right, well, I got a little bit of chlorophyte, but here we are outside the gates of the temple. Let's head in there, and hopefully everything is just awesome. Everything goes really well, and it won't be full of pain and suffering and misery, and, you know, everything will be good. Let's see what those lizards look like. They've got about the same stats as the mobs in the dungeon. There's a solar tablet. I don't know if I'm going to need those again, but I'll take it with me just in case. Ah, traps. Dangerous. Everything is dangerous. Never forget that. Hmm, and that is why those guys concern me. Because they just kind of fly in out of nowhere and they deal a pretty good chunk of damage. The nurse has still not moved in yet. Kind of disappointing. I know it's strenuous, it's a long journey from one side of the world to the other, but I believe in you. I didn't even make it into the jungle this time. All right, so after much pain and suffering and a considerable amount of time, I've finally arrived at the last chamber of the Lizard Temple, and we're now ready to face off against the Golem. I've got my crystal ball set up, I've got a nice platform here to maneuver around on, some campfires, and I've got three Lizard Power Cells to use against this guy. I think we shouldn't have a problem. Like I said, the hardest part about this entire area down here is just getting to his structure. I think now that we got this out of the way, though, we should be good to go. So here we go, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please, Gollum, do not be a pain to kill the Gollum. Boom, here we go. All right, let's get our little rain clouds down here. Let's make sure we got that golden shower rolling on them 24 seven and just open fire and hopefully everything goes well. Could I actually keep him inside the clouds though? That would be very helpful. As long as I keep my golden shower on him, it shouldn't be too much trouble to take him down. He's not hitting me extraordinarily hard. It's so refreshing to have a boss that doesn't hit me for like 400 damage every time he touches me. Definitely want to get those fists down, though. I do not want to deal with those in the second phase. Come on, bring him back. Ah, God. Okay, so we're going to stay to his left side. Probably would have done better against him if I'd brought in the good Spectre weapons over here, but whatever. We've got him down. The Golem has been defeated. Let's see what he's going to give me. Everything I need on the first try, right? No? Okay. Well, I know I need the heat ray for something. I need that for the freeze ray, so that's pretty good. Still do not have what I want, though, so we're just going to keep on trying this. Oh, wait a minute. We got something else here. Sun fragments. I almost missed that. What are these for? They are for making a putrefier. Throw iron ore and sun fragments in. Don't throw too many in at once or it will fully digest it. And I can make that ancient icor flagon. 
as well as Lizardian Explorer's Boots. Interesting. And Lizard Bricks, which are useful for the Putrefire. Very interesting. Okay, so there is something new with him. I like that. I'll have to check that out later. But for right now, we're just going to worry about taking the Golem down. We'll do this a couple more times. Hopefully I get everything I need from the few power cells that I got from this place. And everything will just be all fantastic and lovely and happy and smiley. Well, isn't that just a delightful change of pace? Finally, something that does not completely and totally face roll me. You can always count on the golem to uh, make you feel good about yourself, so thank you, bud. Even though I had to murder you a million times, I appreciate you. 10 out of 10, what a guy. So from him, I think I got everything that I needed. I'm not 100% sure. I got myself a pick saw so I can grab some of these lizard bricks for that putrefire because I'm pretty sure it said that I needed them. Not sure if I need them for anything else though, but I know I needed them for that. I got myself a good handful of these sun fragments. I didn't check and see if these beetle husks were good for anything. Nope, just the same old, same old, except for these ranged weapons, so I don't need those for anything. I got myself a sunstone, so I can finally make that celestial stone, and then eventually the celestial shell. So that's that part of the nano core taken care of. So all I'll be missing is that gem of the universe. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that I'm gonna need. I'm gonna grab the altar and take it with me. And I'm gonna take a nice big chunk out of these lizard bricks. See how many of these I actually need to make this. Oh, just 10? Okay, never mind. Maybe I don't need them all that bad, but oh well. I got a pick saw, so I'm gonna call that a victory. I'd say that's pretty good. So I'm gonna head on up out of here and then go back to base and see if there's anything special that I can make with all this new jungle stuff. We'll just plunk you down here for decorative purposes. Don't move. All right, now that we got all that in, let's take a look and see what all I can make. Now, I know I can make that freeze ray now that I have this. Take a little bit of chlorophyte, but it's all good. Freeze ray, let's see what you do. Okay, not bad. Like a heat ray, but you know, the complete opposite. Not bad, I like that. That completely freezes enemies, huh? Does it work on bunnies? Or will it kill them too fast? Aw, oh, I was really hoping I can have a bunny sickle. Oh well, whatever. Not a bad weapon, we'll throw that on there. That looks like the only magic thing. There is my celestial stone and my celestial shell, so that piece of the puzzle has been taken care of. Don't think there's anything else of value there. Now, what about this putrefier? Let's grab one of these things. Throw in iron ore and sun fragments, huh? I like the way that looks. That's pretty cool. Like a big, like, green gooey skull. So, iron ore, which I should have a whole bunch of. Maybe not iron, maybe I have lead. Yes, there we go, I got a whole bunch of lead ore and sun shard fragments, huh? Let's see what happens. So, do I throw it in there? How does this thing work exactly? Throw iron ore and sun fragments in and don't throw too many in at once or it will fully digest it. Do I actually have to throw it at it? No. Oh, okay. Never mind, it worked. Putrid ore, it smells awful. Created by throwing iron ore and sun fragments into a putrefier. And I can make putrid bars. It's covered in slime. So I just put this thing in there with sun shard fragments. So I have the pieces of a golem powered by the sun and a very reasonably strong metal. I stuck it in your mouth just to get you to puke on it? That was all I needed to do with it? Okay, whatever. It says it requires a hell forge. I'm assuming that I can make this with an adamantium or titanium forge. What do you give me? There's a nice melee weapon throwing weapon. We have a summon set, it looks like. Yes, it does. I have a summon set, so it's entirely worthless. Hooray. There's a wretched staff, though, and a pretty decent looking ham axe. I gotta say, that's a pretty good upgrade. It's not quite as much hammer power as a chlorophyte one. I'm not even sure if it's up to pwn hammer status, but not bad. Tainted pickaxe. It's a little bit better than the pick saw, but this one's pretty good at uh, chopping down trees, so might hold on to that. Oh, well. None of it really looks like it's for me, but uh, I'll craft the wretched staff. Just take a look and see what it might do. So don't throw in too many or it'll digest it, huh? Wait, don't throw it all in. Wait a minute. I remember what it said. Don't throw them all in there. Just throwing it right at him. How many of these do I need? I need three of them to make one bar. So I need to do this, what, 30 times? Feed this skull? This is a unique way to do it, but I gotta say, there we go. Now we're speeding it up. You know, in a way, I think I kind of love this. I gotta say, there we go. Now, can I make the bars? I can. All right, so I can make that putrid staff now. Or wretched staff, I should say. Wretched staff, there we go. And it's mythical, how about that? So what do you do? Oh, okay, it powers up, huh? So I can rapid fire click it real fast to get a massive just blast of putrid blech. Or I can power it up. 
shoot out a relatively cheap, like, big blast of them. That actually looks kind of cool. Does it home in on enemies by chance? It doesn't say. Where is a living target dummy I can fire at? It's raining out. Maybe I can use it against an angry Nimbus. Okay, let's give it a try. No, it does not. It does not home in on enemies, unfortunately, but that's actually a good chunk of damage that it does. Look at all that. My god. I didn't realize how many shards were actually coming out of that thing whenever I shot it. If I could actually be pretty accurate with this thing, I bet you it would do a good bit of damage. Okay, well, with all that business done, I think, unfortunately, I'm going to call it an episode here, guys. This video, for me, has been going on for a very, very, very long time. All that uh, death has certainly made the simplest of tasks very time-consuming. So, in the next episode, it looks like we have a lot of mod content to look forward to. We've got Permafrost, the Martian Madness, and Obsidious to deal with, the next mod bosses. So, I'm very, very excited to get into that stuff. Also, before I end it, um, we've lost the body. You doing all right, Wyvern? You look like you're having a bad day. Anyway, um, before I call it an episode here, I just wanted to say that I am really surprised at the amount of subscribers that I've gotten since I uploaded the last video. I swear, I was at like 820, 830 something, and now all of a sudden I'm almost at 900. So it is just crazy how fast the channel grows sometimes. And I really appreciate it from all you guys. All you guys that have stuck with me for a long time and all you new people, welcome to the channel. Hope you like what you see. I promise that not every episode is me just dying a million times. That is a large part of it, but it's, it's more of like a seasoning on the meal that is a pixelated fireball video. But with that being said, like I said, I'm going to call it an episode here, guys. So thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking me out. I really appreciate it. And as always, whatever it is, wherever you are, day or night, I hope you have a good one of those. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.